Good day everyone! Welcome to the Movie for Educational Research Tutorial Series Episode 11, Friedman's Test What is Friedman's Test? If parametric assumptions are violated or the data is ordinal in nature, you should consider using the non-parametric alternative Friedman's Test Similar to the kruskal wallis test, the Friedman's test is used for one-way repeated measures analysis of variance by ranks and doesn't assume the data comes from a particular distribution. This test is another omnibus test which does not specify which specific groups of the independent variable are statistically significantly different from each other. Friedman's test is a non-parametric statistic which is the alternative for repeated measures ANOVA when the parametric assumptions are violated, the data is ordinal in nature or you have a small sample size. Here is our sample situation. Teacher Ruth wants to determine the effect of e-diary on the level of burnout of students. She administered a scale measuring the level of burnout of students once a month for three months after the intervention was conducted. And here are the tasks that we will go through in this tutorial. Perform the test, interpret the results, report the analysis. Once your dataset has been successfully imported in the Jamovi software, you're now ready to perform the test. So make sure to keep your focus on the process. Let us now begin. When it comes to interpretation of results, these are the parts that you have to pay attention to. It should be clear that instead of using the RM ANOVA or Repeated Measures ANOVA, we use its non-parametric counterpart which is the Friedman's test for the reason that there is a violation in the assumption for the test of normality due to having small sample size. For the Friedman's test results, Always look at the p-value, which should be less than 0.05 for it to be significant. We also conducted post hoc analysis since it's also important for the reason that it is used to compare the groups pairwise using statistical correction to avoid type 1 error where the null hypothesis could be rejected when it is in fact true due to stricter acceptance criteria. Take note that it should only be conducted when the result of the Friedman's test is significant Otherwise, it is meaningless. It is represented by this table under pairwise comparisons. And this is how we interpret the results. First, compare October and November. Then examine the p-value if it is significant with less than 0.05. Next, digital compare is October again, but this time it is versus December. Again, look at the p-value. And same goes with November versus December. And for the descriptive statistics, instead of mean and standard deviation, the one that you should report is the median. This analysis report follows the APA format. Take note of the terms in blue font and the format of reporting values in red font. The main objective of this study is to determine the effect of e-diary on the level of burnout of students. The researcher used the Maslach Burnout Inventory or the MBI to measure the level of burnout of students. Due to small sample size, Friedman's test, which is the non-parametric counterpart of repeated measures ANOVA, was used. The result of Friedman's test revealed that there is a significant difference in the level of burnout of students across time represented by the given values. Pairwise comparisons using durbin conover post hoc analysis show that the level of burnout of students in October was statistically different to November and the level of burnout of students on both months was statistically different to December, represented by the given values of median. These findings indicate that the level of burnout of students who were exposed to the intervention decreased across time. 
and that ends this session. Thank you for watching Jamovi for Educational Research Tutorial Series. Stay tuned for the next episode. See you next time.